Good evening, and thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of Conversations with Camden. I want to right off the bat apologize for some technical difficulties we had going live here. So uh, thank you for bearing with us and continuing to watch and wait for us today. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about structure at Camden Military inside and outside the classroom. Um, we have some students here tonight, uh, as well as a teacher and a dean of students evening, who will talk about structure for tonight's as well. edition of Conversations um, with Camden. We want this tonight uh, to be right an interactive right event. Apologize so please for use the hashtag we had going live here. Uh, so, uh, Camden Military. Bearing with us. So, what you'll do is just go to any social, from social media platforms um, tonight. We're going to talk about structure question, at Camden all about your hashtag now inside the military. And uh, we'll get to students here tonight, tonight uh, as well as teacher. So, and, uh, um, you know, guys come to Camden for a variety of reasons. There's a lot of reasons well. conversation um, here. The most tonight be distractions. Right right uh, so please use friends at home, girlfriends, like Camden uh, military. Um, we'll hear some of our social media platforms tonight. We're going to talk about distractions that you have in classroom, especially as you have ADHD. So just any type of mild challenges, things like that. So, you know, one thing, you know, guys come to Camden for a variety of conversations is that we are not a media. And we're not us tonight. They play a place where, uh, you know, like you may friends in the movies or girlfriends or other media where guys are out taking holes and social media. We're more academic focused distractions that have a lot of strong discussions and potential and many facets of life. It's like a mild thing to be academically, athletically, militarily. You know, one thing that guys like to say at all in our main conversation is that we are not a media. And we're not us tonight. They play a place where, you know, like you may friends in the movies or girlfriends or other media. All right, so we're going to get to it and let you guys. Guys, we're going to introduce themselves. So we'll start with the students. And we'll let you guys first. And if you will, just tell us um, your name, where you're from, and maybe how long you've been at CMA. Hi, I'm Christian Snell. I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. And this is my first year at CMA. Uh, my name is. All right, so we're going to get to it. And let you guys introduce themselves. And we'll start with the students. And we'll let you guys first. And if you will, just tell us your name, and then we'll go with Charlie. Uh, hi, I'm Charlie Duke. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and this is my first year at Camden and Military Academy. And then we'll go to the staff. Bring help if you will. Please introduce yourself. You're muted. I feel like we're back at the beginning of the pandemic. Let me go first. If you will, just tell us your name. And then we'll go with Charlie. Hi, I'm Charlie Duke. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and this is my first year at Camden Military Academy. Name where you're from. My name's Matt Trapp. Uh, it's known as, as Coach Trap. I'm the head strength and conditioning coach here at Camden Military Academy. Um, this is my third year here. We're back at the beginning of the pandemic. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Hi. And my name is Lieutenant Colonel John Heflin. I'm the Dean of Students. Oh, and I'm hi, here I'm Charlie Duke. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. This is my first year at Camden Military Academy. Name where you're from. My name's uh, Matt Trap. Uh, it's known as, as Coach Trap. I'm the head strength and conditioning coach here at Camden Military Academy. Um, this is my third year here. First question again. But first, I want to talk to the guy about. Yes, we can hear you now. The yeah. idea of the military school. And my name is Lieutenant Colonel John Heflin. Uh, I'm most of the time, the uh, highest not learning how to do it. But I'm Snell. My name is Matt Trapp. I'm the head strength and conditioning coach here at Camden Military Academy. My parents are thinking about sending me here because of discipline reasons. And they thought it would be better to get more structure. Okay. And when you say discipline reasons, was it discipline at home, discipline at school, or both? Uh, both. Both mm -hmm. uh, messing around in classes and grades. Gotcha. All right. And uh, LaGrange will ask you the same question. Whose idea was it, and why did it, you guys feel like it was time for a change? Um, so for me, it was actually my dad that thought of it. Um, it, was, it was mostly just because um, I wasn't doing well in school. Um, I was acting right. I just didn't have the structure at home that I needed to get my homework done. And being here has allowed me to do much better with my schoolwork. All right, good. And Charlie, I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, originally, it was my parents' idea. It was kind of always a threat. And then I looked into it at the end of my freshman year, and it just looked right for me. And we brought it up, and now I'm here. All right. Uh, and it was really just uh, grades, and homework, stuff like that. All right. Guys, just kind of raise your hand, three students. Um, did you guys come to an open house or visit the campus prior to enrollment? You did? Okay, good. Um, and that's something we encourage, you know, is to visit the campus um, so you can kind of get a really good feel of what the school's all about. Um, we have a couple opportunities coming up on uh, May 14th and May 16th at 9 a.m. both days. Um, we're going to have an open house. 
May 14th would be a very good date because guys are still here. We graduate on May 15th. So if you wait to the 16th, there'll just be a, you know, a bunch of buildings for you to look at. But if you come in on the 14th, the Saturday, you'll be able to interact with students and you know a lot more students anyway. Um, also, we want to invite you to go back and watch some past YouTube lives. Um, we have a number of those recorded and placed on our website and our YouTube channel, and you may find those interesting and very informative as well. We'll also be traveling this uh, spring and summer. We'll be going all over the country, so check our website, canonmilitary.com. If we're a city near you, um, we typically travel the East Coast. We actually go out west to, uh, to Vegas, so we, we try to see everyone. Florida, I believe you're coming up next in uh, early June, so I'm looking forward to getting down there in some warm weather. All right, we're going to go to a second question. Um, when you guys first heard about Camden, go back to that moment again, and then when you first arrived on campus, was it what you thought it was going to be like? And if it was, if it wasn't, tell us what was different. And Snell, we'll go with you first. Oh, uh, when I came for the tour, uh, it was in July. It was really hot outside. And my first um, thought about the school was military. Like when I first thought it, I thought it would be a lot, a lot of military and um, fun. And when I got here, it, um, it was a lot different. I thought it was, um, it was more uh, fun and definitely bonded with more people here. All right, good. And Lagrange, we'll go with you. You're, you've been here the longest, so was it what you thought or a little different? I mean, when when I heard Camden Military, I kind of thought, you know, what a lot of people think, which is you know boot camp. Um, but when I toured here in let's see, April of I think 2018, 2019. Um, it was actually a lot different than I thought it would be. Um, it would, the, the military is mostly for the structure and the structure was honestly, I, th I think the best part of the school. Good. That was a perfect segue and we didn't even rehearse that, but um, Colonel Helfland, I'm gonna talk to you now a little bit about structure. Um, you know, in the classroom, that's something we tell the parents. A lot of times we get, you know, what's different about Camden compared to a public school or a private day school, you know, in my hometown. So um, could you just talk to us a little bit about the classroom setting here at Camden? Well, I think uh, what makes Camden different is the teacher to cadet ratio, which is you know fairly 10 to 12, um, about 10 to 12 to, uh, students per class. Um, and uh, so also I, I just think that teachers care more. Um, you know, I had Lucas three years ago in uh, a class and uh, I could definitely, I mean, he was always a great guy, but I could see his growth um, from his first year to, to now. And uh, so I think that makes, makes Camden different. It also makes Camden different that we are able to do things as old schools do. Um, you know, we base things, you know, you still use in textbooks. We do use computers in classes, but we're old school with that, you know, writing with pencils and doing things um, where guys, you know, don't do that a lot anymore. And, and so we're also able to, you know, go in the lab and do things in, in the science lab or with the foreign language, they're, they're able to do things like, uh, you know, communicate with other schools, you know, through some, using pen pals and stuff. So it's a combination of old school, but new school. So I, I think that that adds to it because we want to stay old school, but we also want to be new school. So our guys are able to compete in our ever-changing world as they go off to college as well. All right. Good job. Um, and guys, you know, talk to me a little bit about the classroom. Do you feel like it is different than public school? And if so, how? Um, let's start off this time with Duke. Um, my, <clears throat> my college or my classes have all been a lot smaller. I went to a big public high school and I had 30, sometimes 40 people in my classes. And my biggest class now or my college classes have about 20 people in them. But most of my classes have nine, 10, 11, 12 people in them. And it's able to let me have a nice close relationship with my teacher. And I can go in during tutorial and be like, sir, can I get a little help with this? And it's really easy. Um, and there are two able to focus on each of us individually a lot more. It makes school just a lot easier. And in the discipline in our classrooms too, you know, it's the same every day, all day. Uh, yeah. All right. LaGrange, how about you? Any differences between public school and CMA? Um, I didn't go to a huge public high school, um, but it mm. was it was still relatively big. And all the classes here are, like Duke said, a, a lot smaller. Um, 
I think my biggest class is maybe 15 people. My my smallest class is just me and another guy. Um, so the the small teacher to student ratios make it a lot easier to connect with your teacher, have a much more individualized learning experience. Um, Good job. You know, Mac, I'm going to bring you into the conversation a little bit. I know, you know, when I interview students, a lot of times I ask them how their grades are and they tell me eh, they're OK. And, you know, usually they're not that OK. But um, then I follow up that question with about homework. You know, do you always get your homework completed and turned in on time? And they usually say yes. And the parents smack the kid and then say, tell them the truth. So, Mac, tell us, you know, what happens during a study hall at CMA? What does a teacher do and what, what are the boys doing actually during the study hall? So our study hall to me is one of the most important things that we have here. Um, as a teacher, I think it's a great time because you are able to be in the barracks with that particular company. Um, you're there to help them. You know, if they have any questions about their homework during that time period, they can ask you um, and you're there. You know, it gives um, immediate feedback to them and it feels, you know, lets them feel a little more confident about maybe the answers they're given. Um, the other thing about study hall that I think is extremely important is just, you know, a lot of the guys we get, they, they struggle with time management. They say, well, I'm too busy. Well, that is 90 minutes, you know, an hour and a half that they are committed to their academics. And, you know, it gives them that uh, shaved time out of the day that they know they're not focused on a cell phone or any other distractions that they can focus on their homework and their academics. And I think that, you know, I've had guys when they first get here, they're like, you know, sir, I think I don't really understand this. And then by the end of the year, they, you know, they credit study hall with their grades being what they are. Um, and I think it's just a, a crucial part. And I think it plays into the structure of the entire school. Um, and, and I, as a teacher, feel is, is very important. And I think that the students uh, also really feel that that has helped them a lot in their grades and overall success here. Good. And, and Mac, I'm going to stick with you for one more question. Um, you know, I, I often brag about our teachers because you guys put in pretty long days and, you know, we, we require our teachers to coach a sport or sponsor a club. And I know that you're a baseball coach and a strength and, strength and conditioning guy, but what's the, what do you feel like, can you kind of define the relationships that you have with some of the students? Because I think that's something that kind of separates us from a public school as well. Yeah, um, 100%. I, I cannot speak to that enough. Um, as a coach, you know, I'm with these guys inside the classroom. So I, I'm an instructor to them. And then, you know, after school, I become coach trap. So instead of captain trap, um, I become coach trap and, you know, it's, it's a different relationship. You know, you can be a, a teacher and then a coach and they're two completely different things. And it's really good because, you know, you can interact with, uh, you know, an athlete and then you can interact with a student and, you know, you, you are able to talk to them in a different way. You're able to get to know them in a different way. And I think that definitely sets us apart from the public school system because unfortunately I feel that, you know, a lot of teachers miss out on building a better relationship or building a different relationship that is, is just as important outside of the classroom. So I can't I can't speak to that enough. I've got, you know, a lot of my guys, you know, even in the classroom, they call me, you know, Coach Trap. And I'm fine with that because, you know, I do have that relationship outside of the classroom. And I just help. I think that helps build, you know, just a, a well-rounded relationship with, with all of our guys here. So, yes, very much so kind of sets us apart from from, uh, you know, things they're missing out on and in, uh, in the other schools. Good job. Now, Colonel Heflin, got a question for you. This is an academic question coming in from someone online. It says, how does CMA challenge the academic gifted students? Uh, we now offer over 50 hours of dual enrollment credit through the University of South Carolina. So if you come in at least two years, you could leave here with two years of uh, college done. Um, and we have classes in every, um, discipline. You know, about seven or eight years ago, uh, when uh, we started talking a little bit more about, uh, you know, what makes academics here a little bit different, and uh, we did a lot of research. And so uh, I went and talked to some people from the University of South Carolina. So I was able to help facilitate to get those classes here. And so I think that makes, makes it different. You know, so for example, if you go to a college um, say the uh, University of South Carolina, go Gamecock, um, and you, uh, you know, get caught up as a freshman taking English 101, uh, and you're away from home for the first time, and you're in a class with, you know, two or three hundred people. Uh, well, if you come to school at Camden, you're able to take that class, and um, you know, here with our caring professors, and so you kind of got a leg up, 
you know, we don't offer um, AP classes because the major difference is, you know, you're able to take a lot more through the dual enrollment classes. And we also offer honors classes for those uh, guys that don't want to do dual enrollment or the younger guys. So you're able to, to do that, to be challenged a little bit more as well. Uh, and also on the flip side of that, if you're struggling in those classes, whether it's honor or dual enrollment, you have the opportunity to uh, go to our teachers and they will facilitate uh, a tutorial or extra help in those uh, particular subject areas. All right, thank you for that. We've got a lot of questions coming in guys, so I appreciate that. Um, again, we wanna keep it interactive, so please uh, post your questions and use that hashtag Camden Military and uh, we'll get to as many as possible. Go to another one right now. Um, how much does CMA cost yearly? I'll take that one. Um, it's about 30,000 per year, um, just, just shy of that. And uh, we do have some financial aid available that the parents can apply for. It's need-based, um, but yes, you, you it will pay about 30,000 and that includes everything. So it's still the most affordable military boarding school in the country. All right, and then we'll go to another one. We're gonna throw this one to the students, all right? It says, um, worried about hazing. So guys, what is the hazing policy like here at CMA? And Snell, we'll let you talk about that. Uh, so hazing here, there's not really that much hazing because everybody really is friends with each other and everybody really bonds together. Yeah, I mean, take, basically I tell people there's bullying everywhere. So there'll be some bullying, um, you know, just like everywhere, but it is controlled here. We can, you know, we're a small school. There's eyes everywhere. Um, we do have cameras on campus on the on the outside of buildings. Um, we don't put it in the barracks where the boys sleep for obvious reasons. Um, but you know we do take it seriously. Our headmaster is actually um, nationally recognized as far as a bullying expert, and um, he's he served on panels and forums with Monica Lewinsky and you know other individuals who have um, you know very well known for their anti-bullying tactics. So it's something we take seriously. But at CMA, we do not have any tradition of hazing. Um, we also do not have a second class system. So initially you don't come in and, you know, um, for example, at the, the Citadel in Charleston, they call them knobs for the first year. We don't have a name for you. I don't think they're allowed to walk on the sidewalk. At least they used to couldn't walk on the sidewalk. Same thing with us. Everyone here has the same rights, whether you've been here for one day or five years, um, you're gonna have the same rights and privileges as all the other students. All right, and uh, LaGrange, someone actually, and we'll throw this question to you, ask about how does everything work? You know, what kind of ranks, how does the ranking system work and how do you earn it? So if you would talk to us about where do you start and how do you move up from there? Um, so when you when you get here, you're a private. Um, so you're kind of the, the bottom of the chain and to, to get higher, really, you, you do what you're supposed to. Um, you do what's asked of you, you clean your room, you do your homework, um, you act right in formations and eventually you will be trusted with those positions of responsibility and those leadership roles. And as long as you keep doing what you're supposed to do, excelling in school, maintain your grades, it's not too hard, honestly, to, to rise up through the ranks. All right. And then got a shout out from a parent. So let's see what this says. It says Taylor Maxwell. I don't think we could have asked for a better first year with our son. So, hey, okay. Maxwell's not on our YouTube live, but we appreciate that from the parents. Um, maybe we'll get him on in the future. Um, another question coming in. Is there a pool for the boys? So, yes, the pool has been open for quite some time. I actually live on campus and my house faces the pool. And these guys actually got in the pool, I think, in late February for the first time, which is crazy. Um, but it's been open a lot here lately. It's, it's in the 90s this week here, or upper 80s, low 90s in South Carolina. So, uh, yeah, I imagine from now to the end of the year, the pool will be open. And Casey, um, uh, yeah. can I say something? Sure. Um, it's a, uh, it is not an Olympic-sized pool, but it is huge. Correct, yes. Junior Olympic was what I was told. All right. Um, how long does the average student stay? And, of course, one who doesn't have any major issues. The average length of stay for our students is approximately two years. Um, usually students who come to CMA for two years and then transition back to a public school or private day school at home, they're good. They're, they have the tools they need to be successful. Um, students that come in for just a semester or maybe just one year and then try to transition back, we usually hear a phone call, get a phone call or an email saying, help me, you know, you guys are right, it needs to go another year. Um, as long as we have space available, we'll take the students in, you know, throughout the school year. But um, yeah, that's something that, that, a lot of people ask, but plan on two years for a good solid 
uh, foundation to give him all the tools that he will need to be successful. All right, I um, want to ask um, another, another academic question, John, that's coming in about um, is online work the main way of teaching at CMA? Uh, no, we are, again, we're very traditional. Um, we teach every day. We are not, we are not an online school. And so uh, our teachers get up and they teach and you know, uh, facilitate that's uh, different learning styles as well. And I, I would also like to go back a second. Um, uh, Casey mentioned that what the average day is. Um, this year we have around 14 guys who've been here either since seventh, eighth or ninth grade that will be graduating. And for the past 10 years, we've averaged probably about 12 to 13 guys that have been here either since the seventh and eighth grade each year that will be graduating uh, in this year's class uh, as well. All right, thanks. All right, and then um, Duke, we have a question coming in. I'm gonna throw it to you. It says, uh, does the school have PT? And if you will, just kind of describe that to them, how often and what do we do? Um, our school, we do have PT in the mornings. We usually have it on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, we do it right after breakfast. We have a special uniform. Uh, I'm wearing our class uniform, which is what we usually wear to class. We have a special uniform that it's, whenever it's cold, it sweats, and whenever it's warm, it's just t-shirt and shorts. So you're not dying out there. And today we went and we played uh, baseball and basketball. And then some days we'll do it as a battalion and one of the companies will lead it or staff will lead it. Or sometimes we'll just run or do stretches or work out or stuff, uh, throughout the day. And, it's it's not so, it's not super hard. It's not like mud like you see in TV where they're working us to death. It's just a good workout, so we can stay in shape for some people that uh, don't do sports or don't uh, work out all the time. All right. And then Mac, I know that you're strength and conditioning guys. So talk, tell us a little bit about the weight room. How often can guys get in there, and and what's the workout program like? Yeah, so we do have a weight room on campus. Um, it has got everything that you would need, um, you know, to, to go in after school. I know a lot of the guys, um, they come to me, ask for advice on lifting, how to do it properly, um, how to be better. Um, and I push really hard for that. I'm really glad that a, uh, we have access to a gym um, so these guys can, you know, stay healthy, stay fit while they're here. Um, and we've also implemented, you know, if, if uh, you're a football player, um, you know, we do off season and in season weight training. So that is, you know, definitely something that has uh, become a little more popular in the, in the past couple of years. Um, but yes, we do have a very nice weight room facility and it is open to all cadets. Um, I believe uh, high school or above ninth grade and up. Um, and then if you, if you play football, then you will also be a part of our uh, uh, weight training, both in season and off season. All right. And I know, Mac, you know, we had a new gym, new weight room coming for you right before COVID struck. Um, we were supposed to break ground in March of 2020. And, of course, that got put on hold. And so now it is scheduled to break ground in spring of 23. So we're looking forward to a uh, new gym and new weight room. But um, all right, got some, lots of more questions coming in. So let's go back to uh, what does prepping for major assessments like the SAT and ACT look like? Uh, Colonel Heflin, you take that. So we have a uh, class that uh, students are able to take uh, throughout the school year um, and you know for the SAT or as well as the ACT we also have a one-day workshop where we uh, contract out uh, and have um, this gentleman um, Mr. Tim Anderson to come in and some uh, parents do uh, facilitate well uh, excuse me he facilitates with them and uh, they continue uh, workshops you know, throughout the semester, you know, during Christmas or Thanksgiving break or even during the summer. So students are able to, you know, to do that. They're also able to go online uh, and build a college board or ACT uh, account and, uh, you know, get, get online in our library and uh, continuously study for that test as well. But I guess the main, the main thing, again, would be the class that we have here, as well as the uh, one-day workshop throughout the uh, school year that we uh, facilitate. All right. And uh, I got word that the introductions at the beginning were missed. Um, there were some still some technical difficulties going on. So guys, at least cadets, I'm going to get y'all to introduce yourselves again um, really quick for the audience. So Christian, if you will, we'll start with you. Uh, hi, my name is Christian Snell. I'm from Greenville, South Carolina, and this is my first year at Camden Military Academy. 
and then Duke, we'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Charlie Duke. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, this is my first year at CMA. And LaGrange. Hey, my name is uh, Lucas LaGrange. Uh, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina, and this is my third year at CMA. All right. Good enough. And, you know, it's just kind of strange that I just realized that we have a bunch of Southern boys here. Um, you know, typically, uh, this, we kind of have them from all over the country. Um, this, you know, this year at CMA, we have 30 states represented. Um, we have, I think, only three countries now. On a typical year, we would have upwards and double digits of uh, international students, but due to COVID, um, those numbers, of course, are, are way down. So we'll be building those back up over the next few years. Um, all right, back to questions. Uh, who's in control of the students in the barracks? All right, I wouldn't necessarily say in control, but maybe the supervisor of the barracks would be the TAC officer. All right, and we're gonna let um, the Grange, we'll, we'll throw it to you. What's, describe a TAC officer. What's his role here at CMA, as far as you see it? Um, he kind of oversees everything that happens in the barracks. Um, he assists the chain of command in making sure that everything's going strongly. Um, he's there for the development of uh, your child and for us cadets. Um, so if we need to talk to him about anything, he, his door is always open. Um, he's there to make sure we're getting our stuff done, making sure we're, we are uh, where we're supposed to be and just helping us out. Yeah. So now what's a TAC officer to you? Um, a TAC officer for me is um, keeping everybody straight and also the chain of command does that as well. The TAC officer will hand out grades, tell you if you need to get anything up or anything like that. Okay. All right. And then we're going to move on to the next question. As far as, uh, let's see, do we have an engineering course? Um, no, we do not have an engineering course. Our electives are pretty um, streamlined. Uh, we, we, the classes you'll be taking here are core courses. Um, we do offer a few electives, but for the most part, we're going to focus on the meat and potatoes. So you're, you're reading, writing, and arithmetic, um, throw in some histories, things like that. We do have a STEM club, though, as well as a uh, robotics um, club. Now, the last two years, these guys have not really got to have the true Camden experience because we've been locked down on campus due to COVID. Um, but we are now back to normal here on campus. We will be, well, knock on wood. Um, we'll be have a normal school year next year as long as there's some strange variant doesn't you know rear its head um, so we're looking forward to getting back to all of the off-campus activities that we were able to participate in um, prior Casey, to Casey or uh, Colonel Robinson can I say something about um, sim club sure uh, we meet every Thursday and we've done also stuff like our last event we did we built model rockets and shot them off um, we do also stuff we made like our, for the first week in school, we made uh, elephant toothpaste. Like, even though we don't have a class, we do all sorts of stuff and we're always meeting. So I think it might not be a class, but it's pretty similar. Yeah. All right. And, and Mac, I'm going to ask you this question because I get asked this a lot. And when I tell families we offer personal finance, they get really excited. So can you kind of tell us what do you cover in a personal finance class? Yeah, so with personal finance class, by far one of my favorite things to teach. Um, the reason being is uh, I feel like it's just an invaluable life skill. Um, we go over so much in there that will, you know, help these guys in their everyday lives. We go, uh, we start at budgeting, how to create a simple budget on, you know, summertime cash that you may make, um, all the way through investing in stocks and everything in between. Um, so I just, you know, I try to, give some real life experience from these guys. Um, I try to tell them things I've gone through, um, you know, and try to kind of apply that to the here and now, because like I just told my guys the other day, um, you can never start saving too early and, and preparing yourself financially in life is, is probably one of the most important things that you will do. So uh, I really do take that class um, very seriously. And, and I try to let those guys ask as many questions as they can and, uh, you know, try to, cover as much as I can in the time period so they can very much so be prepared for uh, life. Good. Yeah. All right. So now I have another question coming in about online activities. Are they monitored? So the answer is yes. So um, the students here, we do not provide Wi-Fi in the barracks. So they are the Wi-Fi. They have to go to public buildings, so the academic building, the library, admin building, um, those places. If you need Wi-Fi during study hall, you can go to one of those buildings to get it. 
Um, now, some parents do choose to send their student with a, um, a data plan, which is not against the rules. It's not necessarily encouraged, but it's not discouraged either. Um, but, you know, what I tell families is if you have a data plan and you give it to your son, it's between you, him, and God as far as where he goes. Um, you know, with if he uses our Wi-Fi, we have filters on there, of course, to, to monitor and, and prevent them from going to certain sites. All right, another question is, how are we different from other military schools? And they want me to say a particular one, but I can't say that on the air, so we'll just say in general. Um, but, you know, what families have told me in the past is that there are some schools, um, you know, that they visit typically within the Southeast. Um, they'll come and visit two or three. And the thing that they keep coming back to CMA for is the family friendly type atmosphere that's here on campus. Um, you know, you can go to some schools and visit and, and get a very institutional like feeling, um, you know. So here, um, you know, we have green grass, we have trees, um, we have, you know, TAC officers and teachers who will talk to you, the students will talk to you. Um, and all of our facilities are used year round by the students. So I know some places have these super nice facilities, but you know, they're off limits to the students. Um, kind of pointless. I mean, the school is here for the students. So we are a nonprofit. All of our money that we earn goes back into the school, back into the students. And so, um, you know, we're, we're putting a big investment back into uh, our future leaders. Casey, I, right. I would also like to add to that is that I, I think our school is, you know, I was asked that question back in uh, probably um, 99 when I first got here. And it took me a while to answer that. I could easily answer that now. I think we're definitely approachable. Um, I talk to guys a lot about the brotherhood and about family. And uh, last night uh, when I got home, uh, uh, one of our students who's been here for three, four years, uh, his mom called me and, you know, just to ask, you know, some ge generic questions. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're always available and, and approachable. And we're, you know, I would never say anything bad about another military school, but, you know, I just think that, um, I, I don't know what they do, but I know what we do. And, and if we tell you we're gonna do something, we're gonna try our very best to make sure it happens. And we hear from former students all the time, you know, that are in college, they're in the workforce doing what they do. And, and they come back to, to that brotherhood that they, they love and, the, and they miss from Camden. All right, good. Lots of questions coming guys. Good job out there to the audience. Um, Next question, can you talk more about on-campus visits? So I'm assuming that you're talking about prospective parent student visits. And um, if that's the case, we have opened the campus back up to visits. So you can call us and make an appointment or send an email and we can get you scheduled. Um, we did open the campus back, I believe April 26 was the first day for, for visits. So we've had a few come through and um, we're having to knock the uh, cobwebs off and you know giving tours for, for the last two years. Of course, we didn't allow visits and everything has been virtual, virtual tours and virtual interviews, but now we're back face to face. And just throw out there again, we will be having, um, in addition to the individual tours, we have uh, open house scheduled for May 14th as well as May 16th. Uh, both of those are at 9 a.m. and we'll have others scheduled throughout the summer. Um, but yeah, give us a call if you'd like to come visit. All right, can someone please talk about punishment? All right, who wants to take, who, okay guys, which one of you have marched tours before? Oh, Snell, your hand went up too fast. Dude, oh my gosh, all of you. God, I usually have at least one who didn't have to march tours. All right, um, Snell, your hand went up first. We'll go with you. So there's a lot of different punishments. There's mass punishment. There's individual punishment. Um, mass punishment is for your company. Let's say your company was messing around and not doing what you guys were supposed to do. Your company will go out and march all together so you can all... Um, everybody in that company can get that discipline. And then for indiv individual um, discipline, there's PAD. And for PAD, you march during your free time and just straight marching, no water, no using the bathroom, just straight marching to reflect on what you've done and try to change that. Yeah. You know, the PAD doesn't sound terrible when you just tell guys they're going to go out and march around the parade field, but. Um... Let them do it one time and then I think they kind of all agree that they would not like to do it again. So LaGrange, can you kind of talk about that? What's what's been your experience with the pad? Um so usually whenever you mess up, um you'll be in the dining hall and they'll read out all the people that get padded, you'll get this at X amount of days. And so um personally I got 21 days last year, and those were probably some like 
my 21 least favorite days here. Um, it's, you, you get hot, you get sweaty being out there marching. Um, it's not fun, uh, but it does give you an opportunity to just kind of stand around March and think kind of about what you've been doing and figure out how you're going to prevent yourself from doing that in the future. All right. And Duke, we're going to give you this question. It says, how hard is it to adapt to the military lifestyle coming from public school? So if you could talk to us a little bit about that. Um, I'd say it depends on your mindset coming in. I came in with, I kind of chose to come here and I came in where I'm going to make the best of it and I'm going to rise to the top as fast as I can. And you, well, you have the same schedule every day. So you know what's coming, you know what's happening next day. You just have to prepare yourself and, you can't let there's always obstacles especially here like you just have to drive through them keep going and it wasn't hard <clears throat> excuse me it wasn't very hard for me i know for some people it is a little bit but <clears throat> our tax and especially our uh chain of command really try to help you integrate and become a part of the company and a part of the team all right Grange, how about you how hard was it to adapt to the military lifestyle um, I also chose to come here. So I came in with a relatively open mindset. Um, from what I've seen, a lot of people, it usually takes about anywhere from two weeks to a month, um, to get kind of your, get your feet in the ground. Um, and I mean, it's, it's interesting. Um, cause I, when I came, it took me about three weeks to you know, know how to clean my room properly know the gist of how the structure works, when to be this place, when to be that place. Um, so I, I think it takes about a month. All right. Okay, guys, got a couple more shout outs. I like these shout outs. That's something that's not happened before. So it's very cool. Um, my son graduated in 2007 and is now a nuclear engineer in the Navy. All gratitude to CMA. All right, that's good. We'd like to hear the success stories. Wish I had a name for that one. Um, another shout out. Um, current parent, Julie Jones, parent of a cadet. It's been the best thing for him. He has matured so much. We are so thankful for CMA. Awesome. We like to hear those good stories. So guys, along those same lines, and we'll throw it back to Colonel Heflin and, and, and uh, Captain Trapp. Tell us, tell me a, like a personal success story you've kind of witnessed since you've been here at CMA. And John, I know you've been here a long time, um, but, you know, rack your brain there for a second and give me a good success story. Um. I guess um, as you're saying that, and there's so many to tell, but I think the one that um, I promised myself that I would never cry at a graduation uh, anywhere, uh, not even my own graduation. And uh, we had this kid from New York and uh, he came here as uh, both of his parents are Rus Russian descent and um, they they're both can, cannot hear. And so his grades were awful. And um, I'm even going to say his name because I know he would not mind. And uh, uh, his sister came in and she did all the talking uh, for, for them. And she said, that, well, you can see he, he was doing great in the class. He just didn't get credit because he didn't attend school long enough. He skipped school. And so um, we did a graduation plan for him and which we do for all students. And uh, so, basically went case by case so, so you know this is what you're doing this year this is what you're doing this year and and he had to go to summer school two summers in a row and I said but if you do what you're capable of doing based on the transcript that I see what you could have done if you wouldn't have missed school uh these are grades that you could possibly have so he um um ended up um taking some college classes the dual enrollment classes he actually also became the adjutant here at Camden, which is pretty much uh, second in charge as far as cadet ranking. And, um, you know, his, 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 he just started to, to see the, the, the sky is definitely, you know, the limit with that. And um, he was able to do things. And, you know, college, as I talked with him, college was definitely not, not, not an option. And, and so uh, he's actually, um, He's finished up at the Citadel and he is uh, trying to, and I, I, and I don't want to say he has because I'm not sure, but I, I think he's really close to being a Navy SEAL. And um, at graduation that year, 
uh, after graduation, his parents um, asked if they could take a picture of, of us uh, standing there again after graduation. And so as I'm walking towards him to take the picture, he just um, gives me this hug and uh, his cheek is beside my cheek and he just started crying. And he started reminiscing backwards, talking about, you know, when he first came to Camden. And so, you know, obviously I got choked up really fast and uh, that, that's, that's one that I, that I can remember. I can tell you so many um, because the good definitely outweighs the bad. And, and then sometimes, you know, Casey, uh, or Mr. Robinson, I'm sorry. Um, sometimes these guys have to learn for their, their selves. And so sometimes a guy graduates and they get accepted to, to, uh, to college, but they decide to go work for a year or so. And they will say to themselves, hey, you know, this is not what I thought it should be. And so you see a delayed story. So, you know, I guess that that would be, you know, that and, and that young man's name that I was referring to is Thomas as Reliant, who is from New York. Yeah, he's actually won a success story last year a lot as well. Um, I remember I was doing a uh, recruiting event there in Times Square, and I remember very vividly him and his parents being there. And um, yeah, he actually came a very long way uh, while he was here. Very proud of him. All right, Matt, how about you? What kind of success have you seen? Can you kind of give us a, a success story that you witnessed? Sure. And, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy sometimes because I've only been here, you know, compared to a lot of the teachers here, I've only been here a very short period of time. Um, but it amazes me in that short period of time that I could go through, you know, multiple uh, guys that we've had come through. And it just it's amazing to see the difference from when they first showed up to, you know, just in the year's time. Um, you know, one that comes to my mind is uh, a boy I met, uh, one of the cadets last year, and I was able to get to kind of know him, you know, to some capacity, but, you know, he was a, I would describe him as a kid at that time. And, you know, from that time until, you know, this year, you know, growing into going into his senior year next year, um, he's developed into a young man. I mean, you know, just both athletically, um, he played baseball for me. He's you know, developed a stronger mindset on the ball field. Um, he's developed into a res, you know very respectful uh, young man, and I'm very proud of him. And I just know that you know once his senior year gets here, he will go through that with flying colors. And I know he'll do great things once he leaves Camden Military. And so it you know it makes me feel good that you can know that that's potential. And and again, I know that will be a success story that I look back on uh, years from now. All right. And how about we got a good shout out coming in for Cadet Duke. I guess mom and dad's watching and says, proud of your son. We love seeing your face and hearing your voice. So talk to your mom and dad for a second, Cadet Duke. Uh, hi, mom. Hi, dad. Uh, I miss y'all. I'm ready to come home. Uh, I'm ready to see camp and the rest of the family. And uh, hope y'all have a good time. All right. All right, so I'll go back to, to business here. We've got another question coming in. How's cadet life for students with learning difficulties? Um, so with any learning challenges, I'm assuming like ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, things like that. So um, LaGrange, why don't we start with you on that one? Um, honestly, it, it isn't really all that different. Um, the study hall would definitely help with that, um, with the, that structured time just dedicated to homework. Um, no phones, no electronics, no distractions, um, which I know is a big thing for ADD and ADHD. Um, so just lack of distractions, both in the classroom and um, during study hall. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, so what I tell families a lot of times, if you have a 504 and IEP um, in a public school system, you can come into us and we already do most of the goals and objectives that are you know, listed or stated on, on those um, individualized education plans. But one thing that we do at Camden is we're gonna develop an individual learning plan, an ILP. So what is that? Um, it's not binding like the IEP is. Um, basically it's gonna be an internal document that stays um, amongst the CMA teachers where we're going to list accommodations, list any thing that may help the student. And it could be something as simple as he needs to sit at the front of the class because he likes to talk. Or it could be that, you know, hey, he needs to bring an electronic device to take notes on during class, things like that. So 
Um, we do have a lot of support for guys that, you know, do have a learning challenge, but it's also pretty much good for us, just boys in general. Um, you know, I, I'm 49 and I still have attention deficit, I think sometimes. So um, I think all males are just kind of pre-wired with a little attention deficit. And, um, you know, everything that we do here at CMA kind of helps overcome that. All right, another question about the music program. Um, any of you guys play any instruments? No, okay. Um, I'll talk about music. Uh, we have music, we have band, marching band, jazz band, um, and then of course band is a class. Um, the jazz band has been kind of dormant due to COVID, not being able to leave campus to go play anywhere, um, but hopefully they'll be back next year. Um, but yes, we have guys that play a lot of instruments and then we have guys that play none. We have guys that play bagpipes. We have guys that play drum sets, um, electric guitars, um, you name it, in addition to all the traditional instruments you'd find in an a orchestra type band. So um, yeah, music program for sure. All right, someone talked to me, it says, can you give examples of what messing up could cause punishment and cause you to march tours? So what are some examples, um, Duke, that you can make get you on the uh some of the examples, they're pretty simple things where it's things where you'd probably get yelled at for your parents at home. Uh, talking formation, not having a clean room. We have chores in the morning, not doing your fallouts, uh, not turning in homework. That's a big one. Uh, just being disruptive in class. And they all range from things, the merits, where those build up and those will get you pad. Or you just go straight to pad where your tax says three days and your name will get read out on lunch that, at lunch that day. And it pretty much you after about a week here, you figure out what you can and can't do. And so it's pretty set and they're really fair about uh, if you do something, they're going to get you for it. There's not really a, well, you have a reason or you're a senior or you're a freshman, you're a seventh grader, you get an exception. It's everybody's equal here. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And I, I like the way you said that if you do it, they're going to get you because that's true. And, and I warn all new students, you know, if you do something stupid, we're going to find out about it. It might not be immediately, but at some point we're going to find out about it. And, um, you know, a lot of times girls get kind of a bad rep for uh, liking to talk too much or talk a lot. These guys like to talk as well. And so, you know, um, we can find out a lot just by listening sometimes, you know, when we were teachers or um, administrators here at school. All right. Another question. Um, did you get homesick when you first arrived? And if so, how long did it take you to get settled in and adjusted? Um, Snell, you're the youngest, so let's go with you. Oh, when I first came, I actually did not get that homesick because I go to summer camps and I kind of get used to that feeling. Um, but when I first got here, there was like a little bit of that, but I didn't just sit in my room and just wait for people to come to me. I had to go uh, further beyond and go outside of my room and join sports and clubs to meet new people and help me uh, go through that for the first couple weeks. Yeah, good. Now, a lot of our students too, when they arrive at CMA, um, I describe them as a little frustrated. Um, you know, number one, for some, it wasn't their idea. And so they're not too excited about it. Um, but I would say that your attitude, you know, if you're somewhat open to the idea, you'll end up being fine. You'll end up liking it. Um, but if you come in and you're completely closed-minded, um, you probably won't like it as much and it will create more homesickness and other issues. So, um, but yeah, I think it's all a lot about attitude as far as coming in, you know, plug yourself into the school, um, get involved in sports, get involved in clubs and activities. And um, I think most guys end up, you know, getting over that homesickness fairly quickly. Um, I, will, I will mention this though, that the older guys seem to be a little more homesick than the younger ones. Um, seventh, eighth, ninth grades, you know, they, they can adjust, they, they will adapt. Um, 10th, 11th, and 12th had a lot more freedom at home. Um, maybe you had their own cars already. Um, you know, they're, they're not used to sharing their, their bathroom or their bedrooms. And so, you know, that's a, a big adjustment, a lot more to give up. And of course, we always have the girlfriend issue. Um, you know, so those, those older guys tend to be, you know, in more relationships. And um, I'm famous now over the years by saying girls are evil until you get to college. All right. So just, you just got to wait a couple more years to get away, um, get out of here. All right, um, I want you guys to think about this for a second. What's a big challenge that you faced here at CMA and how did you get over that challenge, you know, that hurdle? Um, what was a big obstacle? It could be grades, it could be something athletically, something in the military realm. Um, but if you will, just kind of describe a big challenge. And Duke, let's go with you first on that one. 
for me, probably my biggest challenge was kind of find my spot because everybody that knows me, I'm a pretty loud and outspoken kind of guy. And sometimes I have a little trouble just sitting back, keeping my mouth shut. And sometimes that gets me into trouble. And that's, that's a lot of times what I'm known for around here is saying stuff that I shouldn't. And I get punished for it, but I figure it out and I kind of deal with it. But I've definitely figured out how to shut up and it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. All right. How about you, LaGrange? Um, contrary to his, my, my problem is actually the opposite. So when I got here, my biggest problem was trying to find where I fit in, um, but also trying to put myself out there, um, getting people to know me, getting to know people. And um, for me, I did the football. I was at, I, I played football my sophomore year. So I went to football camp. We came a week early um, and I got to know a lot of guys through that. So that gave me a lot of relationships, especially in my company um, with people around my age that were able to help kind of boost me into the school year. And your turn, Snell. What's a challenge that maybe you've overcome? So my challenge was similar to uh, LaGrange's, but I ran cross country for Colonel Heflin and the brotherhood in that really helped and we really bonded and it made me meet new people and kind of figure out where I uh, should be and hang out with. Good job. All right, and then I have uh, someone wants to give a shout out. Happy Teacher Appreciation Day to Captain Trap and all the other teachers. So Colonel Heflin, that includes you and me because I do teach one period per day. So. <laughs> all right. um, but yeah, Happy Teacher's Day, guys. All right, um, can my son attend CMA if he's going into the 12th grade? Yes, um, we'll have a number of first year seniors. Um, Colonel Heflin, I'll let you talk about kind of that transition if you're a senior coming in. Basically, if your your son is a senior, uh, we will need to get your son's transcript uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if you send us that transcript and we can tell you what classes uh, he would need to take as a uh, student coming into Camden. Sometimes it requires uh, summer school, depends on where, where the student um, is academically. So, um, but yes, we do take seniors um, at the beginning of the uh, school year. All right. And a lot of times we get the question about what happens with guys, you know, how do they get placed into a particular class or, or grade level or that coming in for a transfer? And really we don't give an admissions test. So you're not gonna be tested the time you walk in the door. We're gonna give you two weeks to kind of prove yourself and then, um, you know, let you either be promoted to a more difficult, more challenging level or you know, maybe fall back if need be. Um, but Colonel Heflin and, and others are all well-versed in all the different states requirements and, and, and we're pretty good about being able to mesh everything um, once they arrive. All right, um, need a typical day description, please. Um, that's coming from someone online. So Snell, we'll start with you. Why don't you do like morning until to lunch and then we'll let Duke do from lunch until lights out. So wake up is at six o'clock. They'll call the hallway formation. We'll all get up, get out, um, get out in the hallway by our doors. Um, then they will release us. After that, we can do our personal hygiene and um, clean our rooms. Then around seven o'clock, we'll have a formation to go to breakfast. Um, after breakfast, we'll have either PT, company drilling, or tack time. So in PT, um, we'll do what uh, Duke said a uh, while ago. And for company drill, we'll do marching, practice facial movements and kind of other military stuff. And then for tack time, we'll do, we'll just go back to our barracks and clean our rooms more. Um, after that, we'll go to class at around 9.20. Class starts at 9.30. We'll go to our first three periods and then after on Mondays, we'll have a tutorial after first period. On Tuesday, we'll have a tutorial after second period. On Wednesday, we'll have a tutorial after um, third period. And that during tutorial, you can get extra help in a class or you know, make sure what your grades are doing in other classes. And then after your first three classes, you'll report back to your company and go eat lunch. All right. 
Uh, and now, Duke, if you'll take us from lunch until lights out. Um, after lunch, we usually get out of lunch about 12.45, 12.50. Um, we march back to our companies and class begins at 1.50. Um, we have class from 1.50 to uh, 3.25. And we get out of class at 3.25 and free time. We have to go back to our companies. We usually have to form up. Um, and then our TAC gives us a daily briefing where he tells us whatever's going on during free time, whatever's going on for dinner. Um, so we have free time for about 3.30 to about 5.45. That's where you can do what you want. If you have a sport, you go to practice, go to a game. If you have pad, you go march from about 4 to 5.15, 5.30. You come back, you can, sh you can shower, you can do your hygiene during that time. Um, you have all sorts of – you can do clubs and stuff. Um, and then we have dinner at six o'clock. We form up, march over to dinner, have Italian formation. And then we get out of dinner at about mm, 6.30, 6.45. We come to back to the barracks, usually we'll have mail call, uh, get our grades. Um, then we start study hall. And the study hall usually starts about 7.15, 7.30. And it is about 8.45. Uh, personally, Alpha, we had Camp Trap yes, uh, last night. And our, ta our AOC uh, walks through and make sure that we're just doing our stuff. We have to have our doors open doing all that. And this is just our time to finish all work, get our homework done. All right, good stuff. And I know that some of you watching, you know, you hear him talk about AOCs and, and, and use different um, terminology you may not be familiar with. It's really um, not that difficult to learn. And, and we'll spend a good two, three weeks at the beginning of the school year going over kind of like an orientation period for you. Um, before you start, you know, getting punished or getting in trouble for not saying the right thing or doing the right thing. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't expect you to know all that once you get here. Yes, now you want to add something? Um, yeah, you were talking about how uh, you'll learn like all the different terms. That was another challenge coming in. Um, when you fir when I first came, um, I, I just heard things that like I've never really heard before. And like all the military ranks, I didn't know what that was. So that was definitely another obstacle to um, overpass. All right. Now, guys, we're going to wrap it up because we've, we've had a lot of questions coming in. Um, but I want to leave on one kind of a two-parter question, and I'm going to let all three of you answer this. Um, so, Snell, we're going to start with you. Um, tell me, you know, look back at yourself. I know this is your first year. Some of you have been here only a few months. Some have been here, you know, three years. But look at yourself pre-Camden and look at yourself now. You're about to finish the year. Um, what's a big change that you've seen in yourself that maybe, or maybe even your parents have seen in you and, um, and then talk to your parents about that. Um, uh, hopefully they're watching, but, you know, kind of look in the camera and talk to mom and dad and, and let them know, um, was this a good idea, bad idea? And, um, yeah, just let them know your thoughts. Snell, go. So I, I definitely have got more mature since I've been here. I've had a lot more discipline in me with March and pad for, other um, reasons. And uh, parents, I think it was a good idea to send me here and uh, get more mature maturity in me. All right, Duke, same question. Um, I think looking back, I think just about everything uh, has improved for me. I wish I still had my long hair. Um, I think it was a good decision for me to come here. Um, Mom, Dad, I truly thank all the time coming here, my goals in life, I feel like here has made a lot easier. And it's definitely made a lot more possible to accomplish. I mean, there's some nights where I go to bed and I'm a little mad, a little angry with y'all, but most of the time it's pretty good and uh, I'm thankful. Good. In the Grange, we're gonna close out with the old timer. You've got how many days left? Uh, I think 12 or 13. Yeah, so it's not very many, um, but tell me, um, answer that same question. And um, I'm really impressed though, LaGrange, because most guys, if they're a senior, they can tell me how many wake ups, you know, how many sleep ins and wake ups were left. So um, I'm glad that you're not counting down that, that, that strictly and paying that much attention. But anyway, what's a good, something you've seen change in yourself that you're really proud of, or maybe your parents have noticed, and then just talk to them about, you know, three years, you've been here a while. Um, talk to them about that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I came here when I was a sophomore. Um, I mean, I, I think, honestly, I was pretty immature when I came here. Um, everything was always funny. I was always talking when I wasn't supposed to. Um, so I got in trouble a good bit for that. Um, but I learned pretty quickly um, kind of how to succeed here. And I think 
my discipline, I've, I've gotten a lot more disciplined um, and a lot more like intrinsically motivated, um, self-motivated. And my time management is a lot better, um, especially I think due to the study halls and those tutorial sessions, planning out when I'm gonna get my homework done, how I'm gonna get it done, um, when I'm gonna go to teachers. And um, dad and mom, thank you for sending me here. Um, I mean, I, I chose to come, but thank you for giving me this opportunity to come here and to All right. Lucas, and then plan. Oh, yeah, Lucas, go ahead. Lucas, I want to ask you a question. Um, would you talk about, because uh, I definitely, as, as I told you earlier, I remember your first year here at Camden. Um, would you talk about, because um, I know some, some people there are probably wondering about the college application process. So would you talk about the schools in which you, you applied and where you were accepted, um, how your SAT, ACT scores increased here at Camden, and, and if you know off the top of your head your GPA and, and the schools that you were accepted to, why are you going to where you're going? Okay, um, so I applied to Clemson, uh, USC, University of South Carolina, uh, Charleston Southern University, and Citadel. Um, I got accepted to all four um, pretty quickly, actually. And I mean, the, the first time I took the SAT and the ACT was here, um, but it was very, very early in my sophomore year. And even this year, I think it's, it's jumped about 200 points um, for the SAT and about four or five for the ACT. Um, so I've, I've relatively high test scores. I have like a 1300 SAT, like a 31 ACT and um, Want to? I don't know if it's updated, but at the beginning of my senior year, I had a a four point four six GPA, um, and I although I didn't necessarily want to, um, I chose the Citadel over Clemson uh, because of the structure. And I kind of looked back at why I came here, and I came here for the structure. And I feel like that structure at the Citadel will help me succeed in the future. And Lucas, also one last thing, uh, you know, I, I would definitely as a senior, you know, uh, I, I brag about you in class all the time, um, as well as a few other students um, that are seniors. But um, to parents, I, I would definitely say Lucas bought into the brotherhood and the Camden experience. Uh, he listened, and I know there were days that he didn't want to be here and uh, that he wanted to complain, but he bought in. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. So allow Camden to work. And as I tell parents all the time, allow it to work and allow the system to work. And, and we love your ideas, but you know, don't try to micromanage um, day to day, just allow it to work. And again, we welcome your ideas that, uh, because there are things sometimes that you think of that we've never thought about that, that we incorporate into our day to day life. But congratulations, and I wish you nothing but success, uh, Luke. All right, thank you. Yeah. And LaGrange, I just got to say, I have a whole new respect for you because anybody that would choose anywhere over Clemson is, is a good man, in my opinion. So um, I'm glad you're going to the Citadel. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to thank you all for watching tonight and um, we're going to sign off. But before we do, just if you have any additional questions, feel free to email the academy. You can go to CamdenMilitary.com. Any email that you send from there comes directly to me and I can respond to you. Um, also, um, feel free to call us. Um, come visit. Again, we're doing individual visits on the weekdays. We have weekend open houses if the weekend works better for you. And again, the next ones are May 14th, May 16th. And if you're in Florida, I know I'm coming down there early June. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you guys. So again, good night from Camden and thanks for joining us.